Hi there, thank you very much. Well, that was loud, wasn't it? <coughs> Sorry. I'll try and do it a bit more dulcetly as we go. Thank you very much for, for coming. What I'm going to talk about is in the context of taking my school Google and introducing Google Apps for Education, uh, an amazing discovery I had one evening while trying to plan a lesson and failing uh, about the potential of our students at our school. So um, just to give you a bit of background on me, um, I'm a maths teacher by trade, and um, I joined Twitter about three years ago, and suddenly my professional development went through the roof. Uh, I, started, I met a colleague who was making instructional videos for students, so I started making instructional videos, had a YouTube channel. As the YouTube channel became a bit unwieldy, I decided, well, maybe I need to organize them in a site. I uh, started to do that, and we started to share videos with our students. Um, and then, if you haven't dis discovered Google Forms already, then uh, you're in for a wonderful time when you do, because uh, I discovered that after watching a video, you could get the students to do a little survey in the form of a Google form, and then it would send them an email telling them what they got right and what they got wrong if you found a little bit of script. I used um, MCQ, which is the script I use, but Flubrew does the same, and there's a few others as well. So on that journey of discovering that technology could really make a difference in my classroom, um, after being head of maths for the last three years, uh, my school I'd love to tell you that that role existed before me at my school, but you can tell by the, the length of that, of that title that that was purely one created. So I'm now Technology for Learning Lead Practitioner at my school, and that basically entails at the moment trying to roll out Google Apps for Education across our secondary school. It's uh, 1,800 students, so a lot of users, um, and a lot of teachers who some are ready for change, some are yet to be convinced. but. Um, Simon Warburton yesterday talked in more detail about that process. So if you, when you get the presentations, if you've had your uh, pass scanned, you'll be able to have a look at Simon Warburton's one about introducing Google Apps for Education. So in order for uh, our school to go Google, um, we used RealSmart. So RealSmart provided us with not only a link, well, mainly the key thing for me was a link between our Sims data and a Google account. So what happens is rather than I want to share this with my class and having to enter, the room, enter them in 30 at a time, I can find their class code. I can just type in their class code and I can share with my class immediately. So that was one of the amazing things that RealSmart was able to do for us. Um, it also provides us with a WordPress uh, front page where the students can sign into their Google account through this WordPress page and then they're straight into their Google. And again, that was something that, that Real Smart was able to do for us. Um, there's my school. If I, I, could, I could put it in code and say it's a boys' school in Surrey. There's only one boys' school in Surrey. So uh, you could maybe narrow it down. But it's, it's Glynn School, and um, we're slowly bringing it into the 21st century with a bit of Google. Now, um, when we went Google, there was inevitably a few challenges. And I naively thought, because of my instructional videos and with the experience with the students, I thought, if I make instructional videos for the staff, then all of my problems will be solved, because they'll watch them, and they'll be able to do everything. Um, it didn't quite work out that way. The instructional videos were there on a blog, but getting the teachers to engage with those took a little bit more coercion. I think the phrase is from a deputy head I used to work for, persistent positive persuasion. So uh, I'm always there sort of going, you can watch the video. Have you seen the video? Maybe a video would help you with that. Um, but that's not maybe the only way of approaching it. So I've, I've done drop-in sessions. But one of the key things that I've introduced um, is digital leaders, student digital leaders. Therefore, in the drop-in sessions, the teachers are sitting with students as they learn about these new tools. And if you ever want a teacher to sit and behave and do what they're meant to, put them next to a student, and they are much, much better. Having done a training session with our leadership team on Google, they are the worst behaved class I've ever had to teach. So put the students next to them, and there's a, a huge difference. And it was through these digital leaders that I suddenly uh, realized I'd stumbled across quite an amazing opportunity, because the students in our school have got some startling potential. And, um, and this is one of the situations in which I really discovered it. Oh, I forgot to mention, I gave them badges. Now, I know I said I was a maths teacher, but I had a little bit of an issue with radius and diameter the first time. So these were the first badges, the, hello, I'm a digital leader, come and 
find me behind the bike sheds badge. And this is the one which is more like, I'm cool, I've got a little pin. So these are the ones they preferred. Um, and these are the ones I have 80 of if everyone would like one, because uh, I need to get rid of them. But this is the, the situation. Now, if you are interested or have digital leaders of your own, I, I, I've got a link on the presentation when you receive it um, that will take you to the accreditation we're using for our student leaders. So they actually have a piece of paper to, to take away with them that says that um, I'm a credit, uh, a bona fide student leader. Um, also, if you're on Twitter, there's a, a little um, community chatting about digital leaders, which is under the hashtag DLChat. And the Digital Leaders Network is a, a website uh, dedicated to people in my position who are leading a, a set of student digital leaders. Um, however, this was what I was doing. I was sitting there trying to plan a lesson, and I had an idea of, of having a matching activity. But I didn't want it to just be turn them over and you discover that you're right. I wanted the student, it was, it was, solve it, it was uh, equations of lines. I wanted them to turn them over and then they would have to decide if they'd have found a matching equation and a graph. And I just could not find the right way to present it. So in my frustration, and this was quite late at night, I posted on Google Plus and I've put all our digital leaders onto Google Plus, which is Google's social media hub. And I think I think Google Plus could be really, really big in school communications over the coming years for, for schools that take that route. But yeah, so I, I shared this, basically a plea to my digital leaders who I'd put onto Google Plus saying, can you help me with my lesson, please? And this is what happened, and I think this, is, uh, this, this was great. And what I've done is I've put a little heading related to uh, learning and teaching aspects that, that kind of can encapsulate this conversation. So that was the 19th of November, and it was about 11, 12 o'clock, almost, almost the 20th of November. So this came back. I could probably do that. It came back from Zach, um, and then he kind of said, well, actually, I could kind of do with someone else to join me. So along came Tom. Oh, I've actually started it, says Tom. Um, and then he asked Zach how he's planning to do it. Um, of course, there was a little bit of, wait a minute, sir, you do want it for Android, don't you? Which I hadn't really thought about. I just wanted something. So they're sort of debating the, uh, the ins and outs of, of which platform they want to create the app for. Um, Tom's already doing it for Android. So uh, Zach sort of assessed that. And well, I'd have to pay if I went uh, to create a, an Apple one. So they had a little discussion about what they were going to do. As you can see now, Tom's kind of taken over the, uh, the Android app. Um, but there was a little bit of sort of, well, what are you using? And it turns out that uh, Zach had been using App Inventor from um, MIT, and uh, Tom was using exactly the same one. So off they went with my app in mind, and they continued chatting. Um, actually, Zach had decided, well, maybe you need a BlackBerry one. I mean, it would seem long term not the way to go, but we do have a lot of BlackBerry users in the school, so I can't argue with, with Zach's um, approach. And as you can see, decided to challenge himself with a BlackBerry one. Um, there's the teacher feedback. That was my contribution to the whole conversation. And then um, he said, I'll show you tomorrow. So on the 21st of November, I was presented with an app for the lesson idea that I'd had two days earlier from one of my students, purely down to putting my digital leaders on Google+. I was able for, I enabled them to have the conversation that they were perfectly capable of having, but it gave the forum for me to throw an idea at them and them to just fly. And I thought that was really, really amazing. And that's particularly what I wanted to, to share today, not just the fact we've gone Google and the way we've done that, but, but this um, idea here. And uh, unfortunately, Harris was 24 hours too late. Didn't check his Google Plus soon enough, and he didn't get in on the game. So what going Google has allowed me to do is, first of all, discover that most of the interesting things we want to do, we've got students at our school who can do all of these things and are more than happy to put hours and hours into helping us out with them. So the Google Plus community has proved a real key for, for that conversation. I've been to a few of the Google presentations over the last, uh, yesterday and this morning, and people have hinted at Google Plus. Uh, Roger Nixon, particularly, at the end of yesterday, did a very good presentation about his use of Google Plus. Some people have talked about holding off on Google Plus, so getting, getting used to Drive, getting all the, the basic Google skills sorted. But um, I'm slightly 
keen on getting Google Plus out there to our older students sooner. Um, one of the things I will say is, though, if I just switch Google Plus on for our sixth form, I may regret it if I don't get in there and explain to them what it's for, how it should be used, providing, making sure that teachers are creating communities in Google Plus to foster those, uh, those conversations as well. So there's, something, there's some sort of warning about introducing social media for students without giving them an idea about how it can be used. Um, but amongst all of that, the students are collaborating through Google. They're discussing their ideas through Google. Uh, we've got a digital leader site. And actually, again, it was Tom who did this as well. He's a bit of a, he, I don't think he sleeps. Um, so Tom cr created a Google form, a little questionnaire on our digital leaders site. And a teacher can go on there and say, I'm having trouble with my site. Can you please help me? And there's a little uh, multiple choice to say which problem they're having. And what happens is that then Tom's created a little bit of script that automatically emails the right digital leaders with the problem. So if they're the digital leaders who deal with sites, they'll get the sites problems. If it's the digital leaders who deal with uh, something else, then they'll get those particular problems. But again, I wouldn't necessarily have factored that in. But by opening things up to our digital leaders, they were able to streamline the system quite effectively. So, so that was really impressive. The next steps. Um, in my mind, my digital leaders are going to be creating videos for staff and students on how to interact with the Google tools for learning. Um, they're going to be managing any devices that we take on board. Uh, we currently have 15 Chromebooks on trial from C Learning. And if any of you are interested, Paul Fowell over there is the, is the C Learning guy that I got the 15 Chromebooks on trial from. Um, so we've got some Chromebooks in at the moment, and our students are starting to use those. And I want my digital leaders to be the people managing those. I want them to be looking after them, making sure they're in the right place at the right time, those kind of things. And uh, there's no doubt about them doing that, because I told them, if you look after them, you can use them whenever you want when they're not being booked. And that, that was a deal that they were more than happy with. Um, I'm due to expand the digital leaders team. Currently, we've just got year 11s, so 15, 16-year-olds. And actually, what I've discovered is uh, in my year seven computing class that I've picked up, um, on day one I discovered that one of the students had built a computer and could program in three languages. He's, I kind of want to get him on my digital leader team as soon as possible because, again, the possibilities for the students driving the school forward are endless. So if I can ingratiate those students lower down in the school into this scheme, I think, I think we could really fly forward. And also, I've tried to personally um, explain to the head the benefits of technology for learning, but I think that that message will be a lot more crystal clear if it's uh, explained by the students and demonstrated by the students. So again, that's why I really want to sort of focus it on them. Um, there's also the opportunity for them to go in front of staff and students at assemblies and explain what they are and what they can do. So those are some of the things I have in my head. However, what I've realized is that it doesn't really matter what I'm thinking the digital leaders should be doing. They've got plans of their own. So I, I walked into the library where several of my digital leaders were clicking away because they were creating an app for the library. So students could get the app on their phone and they can search for the relevant text they want to look for, book things out. So already the digital leaders were, were sort of forging change that I hadn't really thought about. Um, the transition from primary school to secondary, they're creating a site so that primary school students who are thinking about coming to our school can go on and have a look at what we've got on offer. And actually what they discovered is it is possible to do a street view version of our school. And that's what they're trying to put in place at the moment so that primary school students can walk around our school before they arrive. Because I don't know if anyone else in secondary school notices this, but the biggest problem in the first few weeks of secondary school is that they're all lost all of the time. And maybe there's a chance that using a bit of technology, we can help them find their, their way around more easily. Um, I've already mentioned staff training, and, and they're, they're more than happy to do more of that. And managing the Chromebooks as well. So Google has been a great opportunity for us. But ultimately, driving the whole thing forward more effectively has been the students. Um, that obviously doesn't come as a surprise to any of us that are in education, that the students have got a lot of potential. But I've found that, that going Google has actually made that 
come to the forefront more easily. Thank you very much. Thank you.